Well, good evening again, my friends. This is Kanita, and I greet you warmly in the name of our risen Lord, Yeshua, Almighty God. I apologize, my friends, for being off air for a couple of weeks now. I was having some voice problems and some issues there, and uh, there was a bit of a, uh, how should I word this, a spiritual oppression clouding my mind. I was having great trouble focusing and this combined with a repeated dream that the Lord had had given me and I had been struggling with that and uh, trying to research and pray and see what it meant and all of these things kind of came together and, and my mind just uh, couldn't quite focus and I seemed to be unable to to put anything together and after much prayer the Lord just said uh, just start Trust in me and just speak. So that's what I'm going to do tonight. I'm going to trust in him and see where the speech leads. You know, over the last couple of weeks as I was trying to do research and, and other things, sometimes while I'm reading and that, I like to listen to the people in the background uh, podcasts and that. So I've been uh, listening to various podcasts, just kind of perusing the dial, so to speak, however that works on the internet <laughs> and I've noticed some things that I've heard and, and not everything I listened to was uh, was was Christian I guess to lack a better word uh, some of it are current events kind of things but there is something I noticed when I was when I was listening and it stood out to me especially as I went to various different believers sites uh, you know, there's one site that, that all of you would know very well, and so I'm not going to mention the uh, the host because it's it's within the chat room, and, and it's not probably something that he really under or really sees very much of. But they tend to group together in different doctrinal subsets, a lot of these shows, and someone that comes in who has a different frame of reference or a different framework, it's almost as if, you're a different blood type and you're being rejected right out of the body because they cannot see the love of God within you or recognize the unity because their mind in its carnal resistance and its stubbornness is focusing on the unimportant and leaving the massive, obvious, completely unlooked at. And when I listen to secular shows sometimes, I like to listen to, uh, oh, sometimes I, I go on and I'll listen to uh, different current events things, even some paranormal stuff. And, and you know, the con most consistent thing I hear them say about the believers of the living God is... Uh, how can I believe what they say? They can't even agree amongst themselves. They spend more time fighting and arguing. And it's true. It's true. You know, my friends, the word is replete with the injunction of our Lord that we are one with him. We are one body. One body redeemed by one Lord filled by one spirit with one hope one resurrection one faith unto one living God when we share these all the others my friends fall away as nothing we must understand that our unity amongst ourselves is a witness to our unity with Him. You cannot be one with our Lord if you are less than one with your brother. This idea of unity, which we in America tend to dismiss because of our culture, and our culture is one of opposition and, and breakaway and you know, reformation and, and, and all of this kind of stuff. And so it's difficult. And 
almost impossible, as a matter of fact, for the for the average denominationalist Christian in this country, the uh, the happy Sunday goer to church, to even begin. The words I'm going to speak to him will be as a foreign language. He will not even understand what I'm trying to say. But the Lamb of God understands. His witness before men is a witness to his relationship with our Lord. The two cannot be disjoined. Listen to the words of our Lord on the evening before he died. Neither pray I for thee as alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. <clears throat> Excuse me, my friends, I'm still having some voice issues. I'm hoping we can get through all of this. Uh, we shall see. <laughs> Let me start over again. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they might all be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they may also be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them, and thou in me, that they, be, they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and has loved them as thou hast loved me. My friends, each one of us is different. We are unique, in fact. We come from different circumstances, different backgrounds, different environments. Everything about us is different. The one thing that unifies us is our risen Lord. Despite everything else, despite all of our differences, we are in fact one together as our Lord prayed. This unity, this unity is, I was going to say important, but it's it's much, much more so than that. It is, it is almost compelling because it provides the most obvious witness to the authenticity of the redeeming grace of our risen Lord that the world can see and witness is the love and oneness and unity of the body of Christ. Paul knew this. <clears throat> Paul knew this and he knew the power and the strength and the witness that comes to us in the Spirit through this miracle of unity. Listen to what he has to say from the book of Ephesians. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you were called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. This unity, my friends, this unity comes through the Spirit of the living God. And the spirits of the, the fruit of the Spirit of, of the living God are love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith. Lowliness and meekness, long-suffering, and forbearing one another in love are mere extensions or manifestations of these fruits. And it is the testimony of this one Spirit that it is through our one Lord that each of us and all of us are drawn unto the only living Father. Believers need to regroup, my friend, and back off. from these doctrines of pride in men that tend to separate and hold us apart. They need to humble themselves before God and repent of the divisions they've created for the first step to restoring the unity within the body of our Lord is the humility wrought within a soul through the grace of the Spirit of God as He humbles a man. Without this, my friends, there will be no meekness, 
no patience, no forbearance, and without any of these, there will be no unity. Pride within the heart and the passions it brings cannot help but break the peace and create divisions. Look, look at the church you see among you today. There are 50 different kinds, all professing the same faith in the same Lord. My friends, this should not be. All lambs of God understand that we are one in Him. And as we are one in Him, we must be one with our brethren, for that is the witness of our oneness with Him. <laughs> If we are at odds with our brother, my friends, we cannot possibly be at one with our Lord. Oh, my friends, humility and meekness, only, only they restore the peace and keep it within the body. Only by pride comes contention. Only by humility comes love. I tell you, we do not work, walk worthy of our high calling in Christ Yeshua if we be not meek and lowly of heart. For he by whom we were called and to whom we were called was known for meekness and lowliness of heart and he has commanded us to learn of him. The truth is, my friends, even the most mature among us, those who walk closest to God, also have a need and a command to bear one another's burdens, to love one another, to be one with one, and to stir their graces without provoking their passions. The nature of this unity, my friends, is the unity of the Spirit. The seat of Christian unity, the seat of a believer's unity, is in the heart or the Spirit. It does not lie in the thoughts, in the doctrines, in the forms or mode of worship. But in the heart, where we are one. In the soul, where we become one. This unity of heart and soul is of the Spirit of God. It is wrought by Him and can only be wrought by Him. Yet it is the foremost of the fruits of the Spirit, for it is a witness to those upon the outside who look upon us. And believe me, they do watch. this unity, the guarantor of the evidence, the surety, is in the bond of our peace and our love with one another, both within ourselves and amongst our brethren and between us and the Lord. This peace, my friends, the peace of God brought by His Holy Spirit, this unites and exhorts the body, where is the discord and the quarreling because of the doctrines and the opinions and the differences among us provoke, disband, and disunite our hearts and our affections from one another. We must all learn to be patient, my friends. Now it's one thing I don't want anybody to confuse this. To bear with our brother, it's quite another. To ignore open sin, and this is not what I'm asking or speaking about. But you know, we can see, as we go about in the world, as we talk to people, as we meet folks, believers, non-believers, it doesn't matter. We can see that we naturally differ one from another. And that though the grace of God changes our hearts and redeems our life, it does not always radically alter our personalities. 
And therefore we are not automatons, we are not robots. We sometimes clash, we sometimes misunderstand. Thus our natural tempers, natural stations in life, our education, our upbringing, our modes of thoughts, our feelings, our views of men, family, things around us, politics, and our, even our very knowledge and experience of the truth of God. All these things vary from person to person. Our afflictions, our trials, our temptations, and many other circumstances which we can never enumerate all so widely differ that you can never find two believers who are exactly alike, each having his own particular infirmities. And understanding this, that we all walk our own path in unity in the Spirit and one with our living God and that because we are all unique and we all experience God in our own way if we expect others to bear with our differences our infirmities sometimes our stubborn opinions we must be willing to in turn with humility and meekness forbear all in love concerning them we must learn my friends to bear with and love our brothers simply for the grace and the love of God that we see upon them and in them for the apostle goes on to tell us very emphatically as a matter of fact there is one body there is one spirit even as you are called in the hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all, <clears throat> who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ, so that he is in all of us, yet as he comes, he is in us all slightly differently according to the measure of the gift. Can you see what Paul is saying here? What he's telling you? I can almost hear his words. We are united into one by he who has made us whole and by what we have experienced and believe in common. Oh, my friends, we must not sacrifice the unity of the body on the altar of our own behavior and belief. The gift is simply too precious to throw away. <clears throat> I've got to watch myself. I told myself I wouldn't get excited and start to start to shout and I'm going to make sure I don't but sometimes you know when I read the word of God it just oh it just stirs me up and I want to just jump up and shout because people seem like they can read it and it I don't know does it go in one eye and out the other like it used to go in one ear and out the other when I was growing up <laughs> it almost seems like it and it doesn't touch any part of the brain or the spirit in between my friends the gift we have in God is beyond measure. We are, as Paul said, one body. Paul says there is one body. There is no, my friends, denominational body. There is no Gentile body, no Jewish body, no male body, no female body, no slave, no free. There is just one body of our Lord on this earth. And the body must not fight within itself. My friends, the very definition of disease within a body is a body at war with itself. It cannot be otherwise. Here again the words of Paul. 
even when we were dead in sins, he hath quickened us together with Christ and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. For he is our peace, who has made us both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. There is one Spirit, my friends. For through him we have both access by one Spirit to the Father. Now therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of Almighty God, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. It's hard to top that. But you know, my friends, men love to be deceived. We are surrounded with error. The hearts of many believers are full of it. <laughs> full of error, I mean. <laughs> uh, I shouldn't have said it that way, maybe. For wherever truth is pushed aside by contention and argumentative spirits and by pride, there can only be error there. And a veil of ignorance is by nature spread thickly over the mind of those who contend unnecessarily. And very little divine light penetrates. And most of that gets distorted by strong views and the, the standards of men. Men love error. God's own testimony is that they love darkness rather than light, is it not? Because their deeds are evil. They love to be deceived. Men hate the hand which would tear their delusion away. When they are encompassed in the midst of error, how can they find their way to truth? Only through the Spirit of God, my friends. Only through humbling yourself before the risen Lord and seeking His Spirit. Only that will take away this stubbornness, this pride, this contention. My friends, seek the Spirit, for not only is there only one body, there is only one Spirit of the living God. We have one body and that one body is indwelt by one Spirit. The same Spirit who lives in me lives in you. I didn't get more than you. You didn't get more than me. There is only one Spirit who dwells within the whole body, all of us, individually and collectively. It can only be so because God is all and all is in God. Can you not see? And this gives us one hope that all lambs should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel of Almighty God. There is only one hope there is only one calling, and that is through our one Lord. There was only one Lord, only one Pasha Lamb, who came and sacrificed himself, that we might be restored. And that one Lord brought us one faith, as Paul said, and so we shall all come together to that oneness in our faith, and in our knowledge of the Son of God, that we shall become mature believers, reaching unto the very height of Christ's full stature. For then, 
And only then shall we no longer be children carried on by the waves and blown about by every shifting wind and teaching of foolish men who would build themselves and not bring glory to God. Who lead others into error by the tricks they invent and pull out of clean air. Instead, by speaking the truth in a spirit of love, we must grow in the very way to Christ who is the head under his control. All of the different parts of the body fit together. And the whole body is held together by every joint with which it is provided. So then only and only in that way can each separate part work as it should. And the whole body grow and build itself in strength through love and humility which are the gifts of the Spirit. And if we be His, my friends, we have one baptism with this Spirit of the living God unto righteousness that you put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness, in meekness, in lowness, and in holiness. that we grieve not the Holy Spirit of God whereby we are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, that you be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ Jesus forgave you. And lastly, my friend, we have one God and Father of us of all. Father of us all. <laughs> My voice is starting to wear out. I don't know how long I've been talking here, but I don't know how much longer I can go on. My friends, we are one in Him as surely as the Father and He are one as surely as husband and wife become one. Let us hear the prayer of our Lord one more time, my friends. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also, which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. In the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one even as we are one. I in them, thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. It's difficult to say more than that, my friends. I can simply leave you with a couple of thoughts. One I've already been, been through over and over again is as you contend, as you see this contention among people, if it builds up within your heart, and it does within all of us, I'm not poking fingers at anyone in particular. I'm pointing to all of us who all make the same error. We must remember, my friends, we must remember there is one body, one spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God and Father of us all whom we serve in love and whose name we bear. And lastly, you know, my friends, there's a reason why the Lord has promised us in the book of Revelation a new and unique name. And it is because we are unique, fully, totally, completely unique in our lives and in our walk of faith. We are made one in Him who is the door to the Father. But we must never forget 
that there are as many pathways to that door as there are souls who find it. A brother, is, a brother or a sister is different, my friends, because they were made to be different. Can you not see? It is a source of our strength and it should not be made a point of our contention and our shame. Amen. I'm going to have to stop now. I think I can barely talk. I may have to play this back and see if you can actually even hear me. But I did want to get a word out. And hopefully the voice will get stronger as the days go by. Before I forget, and I do forget sometimes, and I apologize for that to Zepp and Trish, but I want to thank Zepp and Trish for the use of their music, for their friendship, for their encouragement. It means more to me than they can possibly know. Tonight we open with divisions, and we will close most appropriately with There Is Only One. If you would remember anything that I've said tonight, my friends, that would be it. There is only one. If you are not one in the Lord, you cannot be one in the body. There it comes first, to the Lord, through the Spirit. And it is He who unites us all. For it is He who possesses us all. got to stop and be quiet now <laughs> my voice is giving out and yet my spirit wants to speak I pardon my, or I ask your pardon for my infirmities good night my friends as always go in the strength and the love and especially the unity and the oneness of the living God that the living God might always go in you direct your path keep you safe. That is my prayer for all of you. Good night, my friends. <laughs>